Okay, I, I, I think that I'd like to just uh, read part of uh, page 254, Back to the Attainment of the Real World, for a second. And it's 236 in the first edition of the text, 236 and 254 in the second edition, and we'll read from the beginning of the section. All right, I'm going to start at the second paragraph. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. You're making a liar out of me. When would you say the first? I said the first, yes. Well, I'm going to do the first right, after. Yeah. But... Can we erase that because it'll look bad if everybody <laughs> sees that I, that I write? No. Uh, okay. I'll just have to live with it, that's all. Okay. The world you see must be denied, for a sight of it is costing you a different kind of vision. You cannot see both worlds, for each of them involves a different kind of scene and depends on what you cherish. The sight of one is possible because you have denied the other. Both are not true, yet either one will seem as real to you as the amount to which you hold it dear. And yet their power is not the same because their real attraction to you is unequal. You do not really want the world you see, for it has disappointed you since time began. The homes you built have never sheltered you. The roads you made have led you nowhere, and no city that you built has withstood the crumbling assault of time. Nothing you made but has the mark of death upon it. Hold it not dear, for it is old and tired and ready to return to dust even as you made it. And I think if you think of those words, you have to see that letting this go is not a sacrifice. The ego will constantly try to get you back into its hold. It's trying to constantly get you back into an allegiance, even though I've erased it, by telling you there's something here to cherish. There's something important, like a special relationship. But when you think of these lines, also think of the fact that this is a different world. This is a forgiven world. And if you cherish a single idol here, you'll keep yourself glued in. And you can't see this and this. It's either one. If you buy one part of the ego thought system, one thought the ego holds true, you buy the whole thing. So you have to really see the contrast here that it's talking about and see that when you switch here, it's a switch that's not a sacrifice. Because there's nothing in this world that you will want. If you still find an attraction in this world, it means you have still held on to one ego thought and have not let it go. And that will be your clue. I think it's important not to underestimate uh, the power of your mind to really cherish and hold dear the aspects of this world and thought system. Uh, that's why Jesus uses words like cherish and hold dear. Uh, we love this world, and we love the thought system which made it because we are part of that thought system. We don't want to give up our individual existence. We don't want to give up our individual identity. We certainly don't want to give up our individual self-importance and our specialness. That's why we cherish the world, because the world holds fast for us and protects that image of individual, individuality and uniqueness. You know, in fact, in our society, uh, that, that is really placed, uh, there's a great value placed on that, you know, being an individual. You know, that's a, the capitalistic value. Uh, to, to be an individual, to be self-assertive, to be self-initiative, uh, to be important, to succeed. It's, it's all based on the glorification of specialness. And the world really is a church, and the altar of that church is, is the altar to specialness. But it's not something that's abstract. It's something that we really believe we are. And so it's extremely important to understand that to choose the real world once and for all means you must let go of every, every aspect of your specialness that you cherish. Every thought that you are really here, that your body is here, you know, that what you do or say is important or what you do or say is terribly unimportant in a negative way. What you do or say is not important or unimportant just doesn't exist. Right? That's uh, the ultimate insult to the ego. You know, What's much more terrifying to the ego is not that God will punish you or destroy you. The ego loves that. What's terrifying is that God doesn't even know about you. 
because how could he know about an individual? Again, if, if God is all in all and is perfect wholeness and totality, how could he know about an individual? That's what you really have to look at, how much you cherish that identity. All of your judgments, all of your, your criticisms, all of your pain, all of your problems, all of your past, everything about you is part of that, uh, that, uh, that cult of the individual. And that's what you have to look at. And that's what you finally have to look at with Jesus and say, I don't want this. And at that point, then, the world does disappear just as easily as Gloria had erased it. Stanley? How would you explain in that first sentence that the world that we see must be denied? We're not denying the world that we see. It doesn't mean, de doesn't mean deny in the negative sense. Uh, one of the things Jesus does, and this was basically uh, a gift to, to Bill, who loved puns. And, uh, and so Jesus did a lot of cute puns for him. And one of the ways, one of the, the groups of puns he did was to take all the standard psychological defenses and reinterpret them. So, so they now made something positive. So for, for example, one of the perfectly terrible ones was he took, uh, took fixation, which obviously is a very negative term psychoanalytically, and he said, well, the idea is that he's supposed to be fixed on the divine. Yeah. Uh, you know, dissociation is not seen as a negative thing, but when you split something off that you don't want, he says, rather, you should disassociate yourself from the ego, you know, and associate yourself with me, you know, that kind of thing. So, so denial is used not only in the ego sense uh, of not looking at something you've made real and have judged to be dreadful, but it now means that you look at the ego system and you deny that it has any meaning or any effect. So that's what he's talking about here. When he says earlier, uh, that, that, the, that the, the function of the miracle worker is to deny the denial of truth. You look at the ego's denial of truth and you deny that it has any validity. So, so that's the same sense here. 